Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. It's great to be with you guys today. And we got a new microphone for all the people out there. So if you guys can hear me online loud and clear, go ahead, type in. I'd love to hear also where the online people are from. In the house here, we have people all the way from Canada. So Steve, let's give Steve a hand from Canada. Ontario. Ontario like here. All right. Well, listen. I was just in Canada, so I'm thinking Canada. I didn't even know there was an Ontario, Ohio, because I'm a transplant. I'm from Wisconsin. Terry from Tennessee, we got you. All right, let's give Kansas City. Do you live in Tennessee now? Dude, don't ask me about geography today, okay? We got people here. We got people here from somewhere, okay? It's great to have you guys here. All right. I just think of Dan Miller every time I see you, because I know you're connected. There you go. Fantastic. Well, listen, we are talking about video today, super important stuff, and I'm thrilled to be talking about it today. Listen, you can grow your influence, impact, and income if you are using video. And I, I, I love the fact that you guys were honest. You said, hey, I'm not using video. That's okay. I was not using video for a long time as well. Let's talk about fears. Why do we not use video? Let's, let's just shout them out. Why do we not use video? Go ahead, shout it out. Yeah. Yeah. But you have hair. I don't. Right? No, but I get it, right? I mean, don't we say that? How, looks. We say, how am I going to look on camera? Do you think every time I see myself on camera, I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I've, I had to say that my message is more important than me. Ouch. Write that down. That's tweetable, Joel. All right? My message is more important than me. Meaning, who cares how you look? Has anyone ever heard powerful truth from people who didn't look good? <laughs> All right? Some of you are like, I'm married to that person. No, don't say that. Okay? Don't say that. Um, great. And Erica, are we loud and clear? Are people saying they can hear on the mic? Fantastic. I'd love for people online to say if they're using video as well. Listen, Renee told me uh, a year and a half ago, after we had been doing five years of fellowships for free in the Dublin, Ohio community, and guess what the topic was that day? The topic was how to use Facebook live stream. So I've always been an early adopter. And I've said, you know what, I don't care if I look foolish, I'm going to be an early adopter. You know, with Periscope, remember Periscope? And before that, there was something called Meerkat. Some of you are like, what? Okay, so it was Meerkat, Periscope, Facebook Live. But Renee said, after that session, why don't you live stream all the time, the fellowship? And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. You know, I thought I was too smart. Oh, no. If we, if we live stream it, people won't come. See, see how scarcity, my, I'm just, I'm being real. We got we to gotta be honest with our shortcomings and self-limiting beliefs, right? Don't we? So my, my belief was, well, you know what? We have a conference that people fly in, no joke, from Israel, Australia, uh, the UK. One dude took 26 hours of flights to get to Columbus, Ohio a few years ago to come to our conference. And I thought, if I live stream it, they're going to say I can get carry every month. Why would I fly? You see, you see how scarcity-minded this is? I'm just being real, okay? But let, thankfully, we started live streaming these things, and to date, we've had well over 250,000 views on our fellowships. Isn't that crazy? A quarter of a million views, and, it, and I was too dumb to see it. But Renee had to tell me, so thank you, Renee. So here's what you're going to discover today. Today, you're going to discover tips, 
tools and tactics. Good to see you. Welcome our Dayton crew. Welcome. Tips, tools, and tactics that will boost your video views and engagement. Do you guys want to boost your views? Okay. Number one, here's some tips. Create a fan page for free. It takes a few seconds. It literally creates a few. Se it takes a few seconds on Facebook. Okay. You go. You go to Facebook and you type in on the search bar, create a page. That's it. Create a page. And then they'll say, well, who are you? Are you a celebrity? Are you a business? Just say you're a celebrity, OK? Just say you're a celebrity. You're a celebrity to me, all right? I encourage people that they are their own brand. There was a guy named Tom Peters who wrote an article. You should write down this article. This article is crazy. This article was written in the late 90s by Tom Peters. The article was in Fast Company. And he said, the brand called you. This was before Twitter, before Facebook, before Instagram. Everyone thought the guy was nuts. He says, he says in his byline, just to show you how old this is, you can, con you can mail me to get my CD-ROM. OK? So I mean, some of us are too young. The, the gentleman in the back, he doesn't even know what a CD-ROM is or something, OK? But, but there's others of us. The guy was so, it's like he looked into the future in 2018 and said, I'm going to write an article. It's scary how crazy the article is. It says that someday you are going to be your own brand. And someday that you will literally be marketing yourself. And this was back like with IBM, right? And Intel and all these dot-com things that were starting to happen. And people thought, what? You're going to market yourself? What are you talking about? Who would have thought that today you can pick up a little rectangle and press a button and contact the world? That is nuts. Isn't that nuts? I mean, we used to have to mail a letter that would travel on an ocean and take months to, to, to contact somebody. And today, you press a button. So here's my question. If someone in the 1700s could see you today and say, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, and you're not using this device? What are you, nuts? Right? I mean, I'm just being real, right? Today, people like Little House on the Prairie, right? I love that show. But Charles Ingalls would come back and be like, what are you thinking? He, was, he did carpentry at times, wheels and stuff. He'd be like, dude, I'm live streaming my, my wheels today, right? So here, here's what we're going to talk about. Tips, tools, and engagements. Create a Facebook page. Pick celebrity. You're not going to get a lot of likes. I'm not saying focus on building your likes on Facebook fan page. That's an old strategy. Do not pay money to get likes. Do not ask all your friends to like your page. That's not bad. But I'm saying that that's not why I'm telling you to create a Facebook fan page. The reason why I'm telling you to create a Facebook fan page is so that you can then film there, then share it to your personal profile and any groups that you own. And yes, you should have a group that you start. So Jeannie is, is brand new. She just wrote a book, congratulations. And it's called The Journey of Hope to Heaven and Back. Jeannie could create a Facebook group of other people that share this passion. And you might say, well, what is this book about? What is my passion? I'm glad you're part of Author Academy Elite now, because we actually help you understand with usually subtitles what your benefits are. So for instance, day job to dream job, practical steps for turning your passion into a full-time gig. So if I created a Facebook group for day job to dream job, do you know what it would be called? Dream jobbers. OK? That, so I actually make the noun that group. Your, your book is called uh, The Divine Invitation. She could create, if she wants, the Divine Invitation Community. OK? Facebook rewards groups, not fan pages. But you record on your fan page and you share it to your personal wall, 
and you share it to the groups you're part of. Does this make sense? Okay. That's why you get a lot of engagement. Today, we have people who are watching, but we really want people to share. Because once you share, social media rewards shares. All right? And that's what you're really after is the shares. You ask people to comment. You interact with people. You ask them a question while you're doing your video. You don't just say, hey, going live in five. Okay? Nobody in the world is saying, you know what, I hope Carrie goes live in five. You've got to explain the title of your video. And it has to address where they're at. You can't just say, go on live with my first Facebook video. You might get some people the first time. But is there ever a TV show that just says live? Well, there is pretty much today, right? Right, with reality TV. But I'm saying most people don't want to watch just a, a live stream on nothing. They want to know what it's about. The pros and cons of different video formats. We're going to talk all about when should you use live, when should you use recorded, when should you use talk show style. I'm going to teach you all about that. How to leverage video to make sales naturally and effectively. If you're just creating engagement just to create engagement, you're not going to be able to go pro. At the end of the day, you want to lead people into a sale, not because, ooh, you get their money, but let's face it, how many of you are in one of David and I's programs or attended one of our events? Raise your hand. Anybody. Okay. Most people, unless they're brand new, have done that. Why? They went deeper. They went deeper. You cannot help people at a deeper level if they do not consume your products and programs. Let me say that again. You cannot take people into deeper transformation if people do not engage in a deeper level product or program. The skeptic, the hater, is going to say, oh, you're just trying to make money. Oh, you're just trying to make a sale. And yet I look out over the audience, Terry Sullivan, how long did you want to write a book? Did you want to write a book? A lot of years? More than a decade? Less than a decade? She wanted to write a book for more than a decade, and she could have been listening to our stuff Year after year after year of free stuff. The free stuff's great, but you said, I want a program. And with the program came calls and coaching and all these things. Does that make sense? So you need people to engage, and now she's got a book. And now, you had a, did you already have a launch? You're going, you had one soft launch. Global launch coming. Have you heard any stories yet of people being affected by your book. Wow. Come on up here, Terry. Come on up here. Let's give Terry a hand. All right. Be careful of the step here. I'm going to help you up, okay? Because I could fall easily. <laughs> so you have people who come up to you crying now. Yeah, I went to see my personal trainer. Okay. And she had, I, she had bought a book, copy of my book. And she has tears streaming down her face. And she says, I need two more. She said, I can't tell you what this book has meant to me. Wow. It touched me so deeply, and I want to pass it on to my daughter and a friend of mine. Amazing. So. That is so powerful. Let's give her a hand. Awesome. Take care. So, folks, if you don't have an offer, you're robbing people from transformation. See, some of us are stuck in this. We're stuck. Man, if I go live on video and then make an offer, oh, my gosh. You know, people are going to hate me. You guys realize how many people are haters right now of what David and I do in the last six months? Right? You've seen it? She's seen it. She she's records it for me. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, but the point is this. We said six months ago, we're going to stop playing around. We said we're going to stop, you know, just kind of doing things halfway. We said we're either going to get all in or cut that thing off. And that's what we did. And sure, you get people who are wounded, people who are hurt, people who've been burned in the past, people who you mention a dream and it evokes in them the loss of a dream. And you're a mirror that says, you, you can't really write a book. You can't really have people read it. You can't really have people cry and buy it and then join your coaching program. You can't do that. And what they have is a visceral reaction about themselves. 
not you. And so the sooner you can realize this and get over yourself. See, I was too focused on myself to say, well, if I do a daily show, people might get upset. People might get angry. People might get bored. People might not care. Me, 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 me. The more you say, how can I serve and help people with a message, that's when you start having impact. Does that make sense? Can I hear an amen from anybody? All right, online, let's, let's, let's hear what you think. How to leverage video to make sales naturally and effectively. We do have a gift. We're going to give away a gift. This gift is a good gift. I'll show you why here in a moment. This is a training David did that people loved it so much. I'm going to share with you what people said. We're going to give this gift to everybody who shares today. It's, by the way, I'm modeling what, I, what you should do. Okay? So when you're doing your live video, have a legitimate gift that you give to people that says, hey, if you guys can share this for me and, and get this vision out, get this message out, we're going to give you a gift. Okay? So we are going to give you a gift. So please share. Please share online. Eric is going to do that in just a second. Here's what this gift's going to do. Any time you have what's called a landing page, which means that you have an offer, which means that it could be sign up for my registration uh, webinar, sign up for my retreat, sign up for my coaching program, any landing page that you have, you want to be able to increase registrations, grow subscribers, and convert leads. David did a free training that says that every visitor, every visitor asks three questions when they come to any landing page. And if you're not ready for those questions, and if you haven't given the three answers, they're off. Okay? Does this make sense? And Dow, we had a chat recently, and you, my friend, did amazing. Come on up here, Dow. Let's give Dow a hand. All right, come on up, Dow. So Dow had a registration, I did. and I'm not going to embarrass you, but you would admit that it wasn't the best. It did not go well. <laughs> it did not go well. Yeah. So the registration, and I get it, right? When we're first starting out, we don't know what we don't know. But your registration page ba basically said name, email, yeah, I tried to and webinar. Just, just yeah. sign up. Yeah. And then we had a talk. You saw some of David's training, and then you totally changed it. What did you change on the landing page? So when you come to the landing page now, there's pictures, there's a description of, of what you're going to get if benefits. you sign up. There's yeah. Benefits. There's um, a couple of testimonies on there, um, although we shrank those completely. Um, I'm on there, yeah. which, again, is important. Like, like, who is this face. guy? Yeah. I don't, you but know, you got hair. I do. Yeah. I do. But... Um, <laughs> I have squinty eyes. That's all so right. So I put my glasses on so you can yeah, tell. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, so it, same kind of stuff. All those limiting, self-limiting beliefs, and I made huge changes. And I even I have some other things coming up that I'm going to go back and do the same thing with yeah. that I've been making changes to. We've got a marriage conference in August that we're Fantastic. doing. Fantastic. And we've started to see the increase. Oh, in wow. Fact, I just got someone texting me saying, hey, can you send me that information? Wow. So, yeah. So, just by making those changes. Congratulations. All right. Good stuff. Fantastic. So, we're going to give you guys that training. Um, it's an interview I did with David, and it says, why freedom, finances, and fulfillment are dependent upon scaling your business. The David Branderhorst interview, my business partner. And people like Chris, is Chris here today? Chris is normally here. He said to his friend, Mark, watch this, Mark. It was phenomenal. So we had a ton of people um, jump on and watch it, and uh, we'll share that with you. So Erica, can you share that with everybody who, who shared? And we'll give you guys the link. Okay, I'll put it in the email, the follow-up email, so you can get that too. My name is Kerry Overbrunner. My passion is igniting souls, and let's talk about number one. So here we go. Sometimes, by the way, has anybody ever seen any of my videos on Facebook? Raise your hand. Any. Any. Okay, is there anybody not? And that's okay if you haven't. One person? Have you seen any of my videos? Not sure. Okay, no worries. Here's the point. I get a question a lot. How do you come up with this content? Right? Because, I mean, let's face it. If you have to do a daily video, that's like work. Right? I mean, right? So here's what I do. I don't sit there and say, what should I talk about today? I believe that your subconscious works for you in the background. If you tell your conscious brain, okay, conscious brain, let's come up with book titles. Ready? Go. It's not going to be your best thinking. 
What you want is you want your brain to be on autopilot and doing the work for you. Have you ever woke up from sleep and actually had a really good idea, a really good concept? Okay, that's neuroscience proves that that's not like by accident. Your brain was working. They say that while you're awake, you're building. While you're asleep, you're sorting. Let me say it again. While you're awake, you're building or creating. While you're asleep, you're sorting and organizing. Remember back in the day with the computers, we used to have these things like defrag. Okay, that's kind of what your brain's doing at while, you're at while you're sleeping, defragmenting all this stuff, all this information. So what I do is I have a phone that I have notes. And constantly, when I'm out and about, seeing a headline, having a conversation, reading a book. By the way, a lot of times, actually all the time, when I bike or cycle, as it's really called, um, right? I mean, you got to use the real stuff. But I'm listening to an audiobook. So I am listening to an audiobook while I'm cycling. It's some of the best creating that I've ever done because I'm looking at the nice sunset or sunrise, usually sunrise. Um, I'm looking at, uh, I'm listening to an audio book. You might say, well, how do you stop and take notes? I don't. I don't stop. I have an Apple Watch, and if there's a really good point, I'll hit pause, and I'll just sit there. And for the rest of the 25-minute bike ride, I listen to that point in my brain, and all the creation comes. And when I step off the bike, I got three videos ready. Okay? So... My phone is my notepad. My phone is my journal. I'm constantly putting in there video topics. Okay? Does that make sense, first of all? So the other day I heard a great quote. It said, um, people can't dr dr drive you crazy unless you give them the keys. I'm like, oh my gosh, video. <laughs> people can't drive you crazy unless you give them the keys. I heard that, spoke it into my phone, and I know next time I have drive time, I'm going to create those videos. By the way, I bought a mount. I, I wish I had a picture. Um, I'll share it in the links for you guys. I'll put this in your email too. So Erica, can you write me a note that says, send these people in the room the David training and then also the mount. Okay? But I have this mount that was probably $30. It mounts right to your dashboard. It's very safe. And listen, if you don't feel comfortable filming while you're driving, don't do it. I do not want you to be at your funeral and, you know, you say, well, hey, Carrie told me to do this, all right? First of all, you'd be dead. You couldn't say it, but you, you get what I'm saying, okay? For me, I'm a dad of three. I don't have time just to be like, oh, you know, today's video day, and I'm just going to shoot the next three hours. So to me, I drop the kids off of school, look at my phone note, mount it, press record, and I do what's, what is something I teach in Elixir Project, flow. I get into flow. And my subconscious, you can't do that. What do you mean your subconscious drives the car? Your subconscious drives your car too. I'll prove it. First time you ever got in a car as a young kid, oh my gosh. Two pedals, three pedals, 10 and two, rear view mirror, oh my gosh, blink. Your conscious brain was overloaded with information and stimuli, true? Today, you're having a conversation with your friend, you're putting on eyeliner or you're shaving, you're having a drink, you know, is this true? And you're like, oh, I was just driving the last 10 minutes, that's scary, okay? Your subconscious actually drives the car better than your conscious brain, right? So, so what I do is I just press record and I drive the car. And, and all my content just flows. Now, again, not everyone's like that. Don't worry about it. Who cares? But I'm just telling you what works with me. Does that make sense so far? Any questions so far? Or should we keep going? Keep going? Okay. Titles absolutely matter. I'm going to take you guys in in just a moment and share with you the titles. I'm going to share with you the thumbnails. And um, before I show you those, authenticity authenticity. What's interesting is that the videos that seem to resonate with people are the ones that are stories. Okay? People do not want a seminar. People do not want, you know, point number one today, I'm going to tell you this, and point number two. 
Not the videos I do. The videos I do, people want authenticity. They want a bird running across. They want a car in the background. Why do you think, so there's three types of videos. Jot this down, there's three types of videos. Highly expensive professional videos. We've done some of those. Has anyone ever seen Day Job to Dream Job trailer? Has anybody seen Day Job to Dream Job trailer? Or Elixir Project Experience trailer? Those videos cost money. I mean, those videos are sometimes a couple thousand dollars. You can't do that all the day, all the time. So you have highly expensive videos that are used for highly expensive <laughs> events, right? You might say, you paid, you paid $5,000 for that Shawshank video where you had actors and all this stuff. Yeah, but the event escaping Shawshank, the first time we did it, did it generated $75,000. Because people saw it and they said, this is legit. You know, it wasn't me just like, hey, we're going to have an event here. Hope you can come. People don't expect to invest money then if, if it looks cheap, OK? Second type of video are, I hate to say it, maybe it's a slam. I don't know. Maybe it's not politically correct. Who knows? I've never been politically correct. But it's local yokel videos. Is that even right to say? I don't know. Did I just offend people? Who knows? But you know what I'm talking about, right? Have you seen these commercials where you're like, oh my gosh, what are they thinking? And it's like, hi, Jim, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. You know, and it's so canned and acting and like, it just, they probably spent a bunch of money, but it feels like it's very wooden. It doesn't, it's not good, highly expensive, but they kind of wasted their money. You know what I'm saying? Have, is, is this just me or have you guys ever seen those videos? Okay, all right. The other type of videos are Chewbacca mom, where she's in her car outside of what Coles, and she's laughing and filming, and there's she, you know, probably dropping her phone and stuff. People don't care. People love the fact that this is real. In fact, they're happy that it's real. They're sick of the stuff that's plastic, that is much of social media. Not you guys, but many times. It's just putting our best foot forward. Does this make sense, everybody? OK, so you're tracking? All right. That's where I camp. I camp 99% of my time on the authentic videos. Rarely do I use an expensive video, unless it's featuring a product or program. OK? Um, ask questions. Especially if you're doing live video, you want to ask questions. So. How many questions did I ask to Erica so, so far? What do you think? A couple? Three or four? OK. I'd like to hear from the live stream how many times, just put down professional if you've used professional video, high, highly expensive, local if you've ch taken a shot at that, or authentic. All right? I'd love for people to weigh in on our show right now about that. Mention people or products. Do you realize in the last week, just shout out some names, who did I have on our live video in the last week where I interviewed them? Just yell out some names. Brad Burke. Brad Burke. Anybody else? One's a girl. Dan Miller. Dan Miller. Had him. Just showed you one of them on the screen. OK, Rachel Peterson. David Branderhorst. Dexter Godfrey. Dean Folks, Jeff Brown. Now, why did I do that? Because we have a conference coming up. So one strategy is if you have an event, give people a sample. I'm surprised at how many people don't do this. So many people think the event starts when you walk in the door. The event starts way before, and especially if you want tickets, the event starts way before. Does this make sense? Give people a sample so they say, oh my, Dan Miller just shared that in 15 minutes. I need his session. And the scarcity-minded person says, well, what if I share it and they don't come? Come on, let's be honest. How many times have we been there? Right? Well, what happens if Dan shares his best stuff and they don't come? That, my friends, is the kiss of death strategy. Let's hold back good value from people so that they can actually give us money first. That's theft. All right? When you ask for money without first giving value, 
That's called stealing. And that's why many people's businesses are not working. Because they're taking and they're not giving. All right? Does this connect? Anybody? Does this make sense? All right. Uh, Pre-purpose. Pre-purpose. At our stage in the game, we got to pre-purpose, not repurpose. Your business will change when you begin to pre-purpose. So what I do lots of times is I think ahead. Okay, much of the business for me is thinking. It's saying, okay, I'm going to meet with so-and-so tomorrow. I wonder if I could do a video. And if I do a video, what would we say? So then when I show up, I say, hey, hey, Dean, you know, bring your book tomorrow because I'm going to do a quick video and boom, boom, boom. So I pre-purpose my life. And you might say, that takes a lot of thought. I'll tell you what, it actually saves you time. Because what does the average person do? Oh, Dean, we met last week, you know? I should have filmed. Hey, can we meet again and I'll set up the camera and blah, blah, blah. You see what I'm saying? It actually takes more time when you don't pre-purpose. So a lot of what I do in my life is look at my opus. That's from the deeper path. How many of you have gone through the deeper path? Raise your hand. All right, a bunch of you. Erica, can you give people a free deeper path book? I don't even know if you have that link. But it's, uh, I think it's deeperpath.carryoverburner.com or something like that. So it's a free book. Just pay for shipping and handling. But that book will show you how to write your opus. And what I do is I have my opus, and that becomes my GPS for my week. Okay? All right. Pre-purpose content, meaning these days, if you do it on Facebook Live, I'll show you in a moment when I get to Facebook, there's a little button that you can press that says download. And once you download it, which I always encourage you to do, you have the raw video file. And what you can do is you might not know how to do this yet, but somebody on Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, can take that video, raw video, and they can strip out the audio. Now you could do it. It's not hard at all, right, Dow? Super easy, couple buttons. But now you have a podcast. You see what I'm saying? So you shoot a video, which is what we do these days. I got somebody on our team, Sheila, who strips the audio. I got someone else on our team named Abby who puts it on YouTube. So that one little thing is now in multiple mediums. Does that make sense? And again, you say, well, that's fancy that you got a team. Yeah, you know what? I didn't have a team. And you can have a team. It's called Fiverr. And it costs five bucks. So now you have a team, too. Right? You really do. I'll show you, on, I'll show you right now how on Fiverr you, can, you, you have a team. Okay? All right, let's, let's go to Facebook here, and I'll show you a couple things so that you can see what I'm talking about here. We'll get, uh, we'll get this rolling here. Any questions so far? Any questions so far as, as we're getting started here? Questions? Jeff, come on up here, man. Can you, do you mind, Jeff Elder, you mind coming up here? Let's give Jeff a hand. So, Jeff, you just recently did uh, some crazy cool stuff. Come on up here, man. Okay, no problem. You can come down here. We'll do it right here. Awesome. Are we good? Okay. So you just decided to go first time ever with a little bit of your painful journey yes. on video. What in the world convinced you to do that? It certainly wasn't me. It wasn't you. Um, crazy as this sounds, it, it was actually a dream that I had. And I just, God said it was time to tell my story. Time to tell your story. Up until now, I've told it to small groups of people, mm -hmm. individuals. And it's funny because I had family members reaching out to me telling me, hey, I didn't even know that about your story. Wow. So as much as, of it as I told them, I, it wasn't the total story, but I just felt like it was time to, yeah. to get it out. What held you back in the past? Oh, gosh. Fear. Um, it took me a long time to start doing video because it's apparent I have a speech impediment, which I talk about that in my story. So I, I was afraid to, to speak publicly because I was afraid people wouldn't understand. So there's a lot of that fear that I had to overcome. 
but what's interesting is I'm in a business now where I speak all the time. So it's just ironic that one of my major conditions and fears is now something that I've overcome. And so I wanted to share that story too. I love it. And what we say in the tribe often is that the area of your deepest wound is often going to be the area of your biggest impact. And I think that's true. What have you seen response-wise? Gosh. As of this morning, I had the first episode has almost, well, has over 400 views, almost 100 comments. I've had people message me on Facebook, on text message, hey, let's get together, let's talk. I had one lady um, reach out to me and, and just said, this is the time I needed to hear something like this. And wow. so I just want to thank you for having the courage to share the story. So the response has been more than I realized it would be. And I know business wasn't your motivation at all, but do you think you'll get business from this? Probably, yeah, yeah but I was telling Joel's group yesterday, I wanted to be so careful not to sure cross over because that wasn't the purpose and I didn't want people to feel sorry for me or, uh, that, uh, that was another fear of mine is I didn't want to portray that but yeah I think in the long run it will definitely open some business opportunities maybe opportunities I had no idea or I have no idea where it's going to lead but it may open might be a speaker it might, <laughs> right. it might turn right. into that TED yeah. talk yeah yep. Well, let's, get, let's give him a hand. That's fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much. So how many of us um, can relate? Like, I don't feel that I'm worthy or who would listen to me or what if people take it wrong? I get it. I totally get it. We have what I call the safe message and we have what's called the scary message. And I tell this often to our authors in Author Academy Elite, which, by the way, Erica, can you share the, the uh, challenge today the, the, uh, for the webinar, the uh, carryoverburn.com slash five-day challenge? Listen, authors all the time say, Carrie, I got two books in me. I could write the safe book or I could write the scary book. Which one do you think I should write? What do I tell them? Scary. Write the scary book, right? Because that's what I know is going to touch people. That's what's going to impact people. That's what's dangerous. That's what's risky. There was a time when I had written, in fact, my first three books were my safe books. They were my safe books. Journey Toward Relevance, The Fine Line, and Called. Have any of you even heard of those three? <laughs> okay, just one, because I was your pastor, right? Right? I think I own them all. You own them all. There you go. In other words... Called is a book on how to make disciples. It's my dissertation turned into a book. Sounds really exciting, right? Um, the fine line and the journey toward relevance, I wrote about scary people in the book, meaning like Mark Palmer and stuff, people that I said, well, gee, I wish I could be like them, but I can't be. It wasn't until your secret name where I literally was in my basement floor and I felt like I was supposed to write it but I was deathly afraid. I mean, what guy who used to carve cuss words in his body, who's now a pastor, is saying, let me just put that in writing for the world to read, you know? I mean, I had all the thoughts come up. What if the church gets ticked? What if I lose my job? I got three kids. You see where we start going? And then what about my family? You know, I did have to manage that because my parents didn't know growing up kept it very private, okay? So there was a time where I was sitting in the basement floor, and here's my little talk with God. And if you're not a person of faith, here or live stream, that's okay. Just, just hear me out. I, I didn't hear God tell me, but I felt God tell me, you don't have to write that book. You don't have to write that book. But if you don't, you will miss out on a major blessing. Ouch. It's like, oh, thanks, God. So, so I really have to write the book then, right? But I would say, Deborah, that's probably what connected us, that message. Many of you in the room, that was the book that, quote, opened the door of influence. That's how, Steve, I met you, okay? That was the book. So the question is, are you going to get on video? And I'm not saying 
you need to just dump everything all at once. Jeff, it took you a while. How long were you on video before you shared your story? Yeah. Okay. Great. So the last five or six months it took him to get comfortable, confident. And here's the thing. You don't need to share the whole story. Okay. So there's times where you share your story in levels based upon who's out there. Does this make sense? Okay. So here's, here's uh, the website. Let me share a couple things about this. I'll go to Facebook here. And I'm going to just bring up some, some things. So this is our, quote, fan page that I was telling you guys about. And I'm going to click videos, OK? So underneath video, oh, there's me. That's scary. Um, but here's different videos that I'm going to talk about. Now, you can create playlists. Don't worry about it. Just get some content out there. But we have a playlist called Igniting Souls Conference with 39 videos. We have the Igniting Souls Daily Show with 88 videos. We have the Igniting Souls Fellowship. Thanks, Renee, for kicking my butt telling me to do that. And then we have all videos right here. But I'm going to just pick up some uh, titles for you guys. OK? That's what we're going to talk about. Why you need to be vulnerable as a speaker. These are why titles. Write that down if, if you're taking notes. Some of your titles should be called why video, videos. So I have why using video increases engagement for your book, brand, and business. Now here's the interesting thing. I don't tell you how. Brad has limited time. We have 30 minutes. I can't get into everything. So especially when I feature conference speakers, I basically say, why? Why social media will increase your book brand and, or business? Why you need to scale your business to experience freedom, finances, and fulfillment? Many times on these interviews, I talk about the why. And people say, I get it. And then they say, how? And then you say, if you'd like more, here it is. OK? Does that make sense, first of all? Is that a light bulb for anybody? to do a why video, and then your offer is the how. How many of you have gone through Elixir Project experience? Anybody in the room? OK. My webinar for that last week, two weeks ago, was something about um, how to stay laser focused and achieve your goal once and for all. 90 minutes of great content, but at the end, uh, even though I gave them how, it's idea, focus, and flow. Those of you who are in that program know it's a 30-day deep dive into neuroscience and productivity and all kinds of stuff. You can't do that on a webinar. So what you do, your video, here's the point of your video, raise their awareness. You might say, Carrie, what is the goal of my video? Raise their awareness. That's what your video is supposed to do. It's supposed to raise their awareness because here's what people re don't realize. They don't know what they don't know. If you come out and say, why you need a landing page, you know, or, or, or buy my landing page program, people are like, what is a landing page? And I don't even know why I need one. So why are you telling me I need to buy it? So in the beginning when David and I started our business, I think many times I assume too much. So now I title everything with what is the benefit that these people want. So this one is called Increase Engagement for Your Book, Brand, and Business. I mean, that, that's, that's what it was. The number one factor that enables author, coaches, and speakers to scale their business. Um, why you need to be vulnerable as a speaker, OK? Um, why it's critical to attract high profit, low maintenance clients. Now, let's get into some other ones. Why ignoring the professionals? I don't even know what this is. There's, my, there's me in my car, so you can do it anywhere. Why ignoring the professionals often leads to a big payoff? Is that a little edgy? Is that a little contrarian, though? I mean, do we wake up and say, you know what? We're supposed to trust professionals. Don't we say that? So 
a lot of times with videos, I want to choose something that's contrarian. Meaning, I, I haven't heard that before. That's a new take. Uh, Becky, you do audiobooks. Um, so titles could be um, why you should never do why you should never publish an audiobook. What do you think authors are going to listen to? You see, I mean, oh, what or three three factors to consider before you publish your audiobook. See, the I spend more time thinking about the title than I do the content sometimes. And then my videos always include a story. Um, so notice uh, Rachel's Why Social Media Done Right Increases Your Online Traffic. How to Get Booked Again, again and Again as a Speaker. Successful People Spend Less Time on This. I don't say what it is. You catch it? And you might say that's clickbait. Or that's, listen, 600 people want to know what successful people spend more time and less time. Can I really answer it in a title? Not effectively. So you actually do people a disservice if you give them everything up front. A couple other ones. How to gain more followers, friends, and fans. Why the most successful often plan to fail. A random guy at the store just handed me this. All right? I, I mean, don't you want to know what it is? A random guy at the store just handed me, and it was tickets. It was tickets to a baseball game. I just literally did a video. I'm like, you know what? Let's do a video. And I talked about, here, here what was the point? The point was expect for good things to happen to you in the day. If you tell your brain to find good things to look for in the day, you'll see them. Because everyone has good things and bad things that happen to them every day. How many of you often hear the opposite? How was your day? Oh, let me tell you about the three things that stunk. You told your RAS filter, your reticular activating system, to find it, and it did exactly that. Does this make sense, everybody? Do you think people found that video helpful? Do you think people said, hey, thanks for telling me to find good things in my day? Absolutely. All right. This guy at Starbucks was not a happy camper. Anybody see that one? So that one's about a guy who literally, I went to, uh, treated my kids to a Starbucks frappuccino because they did something good. And, they, and the guy, we said, oh, hey, how you doing today? The guy behind Starbucks counter. And he's like, well, I'm here. And I didn't even need to say much. But then afterwards, I asked my kids, I said, you guys think that guy likes his job? And my eight-year-old's like, no, I think he's <laughs> angry. So did a video on it. You see, there's content all around you. You just need to capture it. And Abby's great at picking thumbnails and stuff like that. Because the thumbnails used to be the same shot of me in the car every time, every time. And people are like, what? So then we did some different thumbnails, which you can do. All right? Um, Let's keep rolling. Oh, by the way, this stuff is just called green screen. This stuff over here. You can literally go to Fiverr. I told you Fiverr before. I'm just going to take you to Fiverr. So F-I-V-E-R-R.com. This is your new team. This is your new international team. You can type in there anything. All right? One thing might be remove green screen. Remove background, green screen, Photoshop. I don't even know what I'm saying. But look, here we are. Boom. This person, I will remove green screen background in four hours. I asked one of our teammates to do this. She was very nice about it, but she's like, Carrie, that would take me 100 hours to remove green screen. And I'm like, I don't want to pay you that. Um, so no, she's like, I don't want to do that. She actually said, I don't want to do that because she said, our team loves to be challenged. And she said, can't you just find somebody on Fiverr? And I'm like, I don't know, can I? So I go there, and literally in four hours, they did what would have taken our team a ton of time to do. And I think we paid for the $50 one because it was so many. But I'm saying that some of these countries, $50 will pay for two months' salary. They want these jobs. You're not being rude. They want to do this. In fact, you're depriving them if you don't. 
And so, boom, four hours later, we got all the green screen. And what that allows us to do is these little sh <coughs> shots where um, there's me, there's me. It just creates a little bit of, sp you point to things. It's, you look dumb doing the photos. I mean, you know. But it creates thumbnails. And that's what Brad, who's coming to the Igniting Souls Conference, taught us to do. And it's working. All right? Um, let's keep going. Let's go back to PowerPoint. We'll go quicker. I could talk about this stuff quite a bit. Let's go quicker, though. Here's some of our screens, as I mentioned. Folks, this, this, is, this is a little exciting thing that I got to share. Those of you who know us, what has been our dream to do in tw by 2020? Anybody? Ignite one million souls, OK? Sometimes we think small. I mean, that was like the biggest thing I could think about back in 2013, one million souls. Thanks to David and our team, look at this week. Do you see that? Can anyone read that? One million this week and 63,000 video views this week. I'm not saying that because, ooh, look at, look at me. In fact, it's the team. You know, look at David and other people. But all I'm saying is, that is what was stopping me. Well, I'm bald. Why, you know, how am I going to look? Well, I can't do this. Well, blah, blah, blah. That's what's preventing you guys from having a bigger impact. Does that make sense? All right. Just this one, 109,000 views, 640 shares. Look at me. I don't even, my face looks jacked up, all right? I mean, look at this. <laughs> Come on. Some of you guys look, uh, all you guys look a lot better than that. Tell the negative people in your life to do this. You know how many people hated that video? I got so many people that were like, you're an idiot, you're a freak, blah, blah, blah. You don't respond. You just let the people respond. If you rush in there and I'm not a freak, you know, then you look like a freak. So you just, you just pop, right, David? You just pop that out there. And David's so smart. What he does is he builds lookalike audiences around it for Facebook ads. This is the stuff that we teach in Business Academy Elite over there, where you put videos out there, put, what did you do? Put like five bucks a day on this video and let it run for how long? A few weeks. And then he's got what's called a lookalike audience that instead of running ads to everyone, we run them to that group. So the purpose of the video is for them to get familiar with me. Does this make sense? Even if people, do, and David says this a lot, even if people don't buy or hate you or this or that, they're getting familiar with you. If no one's ever heard of you, do you think they're going to be like, oh, yeah, your coaching program, I'm in. No. Okay? This is the stuff we teach in Business Academy Elite. Quarter of a million views, if I'm good at math. I'm not good at math. The first person you fear, the person you fear the most isn't who you think. And I said, it's you. It's you on fire. That's who you're really scared of. Again, um, oh, please, who died and make this joker an expert? <laughs> and then I responded, wishing you great blessings on your day. You know, that was when I still responded. OK? But this, you got to put on your armor when you start going into this level. And I didn't for a lot of years. I'm like, oh, you know. OK? But we said this year, we're, we're putting on our armor. And we're going into it. Ah, you thought that was funny, Jill. You like that. OK. The pros and cons of different video format, including live streaming and Facebook Live and recording, blah, blah, blah. Do you guys want to see how to set up a B Live? Would that be helpful? OK. Oh, just for you. All right. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so I'll show you how to set up a B Live. B Live is free. So B Live, you just go to B E L I V E dot com. So here is uh, our account, and it's free for 14 days. It connects with Facebook, but this is what gives you, I'll show you what it looks like, so you can see what it looks like, first of all. Because you might say, what is Be Live, and, and why would I do it? Let's go to um, Rachel here. Yes, has hair. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, 
But what happens is, what happens is people are going to comment. Watch this. People are going to comment, and you guys have seen this before. The questions can pop up on your screen. It's great to have you with them. So you're going to give us you see this? See that at the bottom? So what happens is this is like a talk show where you have a guest side by side and people who are watching can ask questions and you can hide the comment, you can show the comment, and it shows their faces. So it's much more engaging than just, hey, I'm talking to my friend. Okay? So Be Live we have done for years. It's one of our strategies, but it's as simple as this. You go, you hit talk show. Hold on. See, I don't even know how to work it. You go to profile. I, I'm going to profile just to show you guys. I've done 70 broadcasts, 6,000 comments, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So I'm going to hit a create a new broadcast, and I'm going to hit talk show, and then I want it posted, not to my timeline. I want it posted to my page. Okay? So I click post to my page. It'll show here in a second. I click carry over Brunner. And then the text is so important, folks. You can't change it either. So you sit there and you think, like, what, is that? what am I going to call this show? All right, so I'm just going to call it test with fellowship. Don't call it that. Don't call it that. Okay. But here's the other cool thing. You can do a test. You see that? So for all you people who are scared, Look at that. Boom. Test only. Don't post. All right? But for those of you who are scary, you're just like, I'm jumping in. I don't care. But then you hit Create Facebook Live, and as long as it's 10 minutes out, you can do it. You can't do it longer than a week, though. You can't schedule it. And then it sits there on your Facebook page, and it says a countdown timer. And it figures everyone's time in their own time zone. So it says Terry's going to be starting a live video in one day and two hours. And people can hit set reminder. So now people are starting to see that, oh, I want to see that set reminder. And now they're starting to get excited about it. What Jeff did, Jeff did this. Fantastic job, Jeff. Jeff created branding. Do you see that? So now on my show it can have a top thing at the that says igniting souls or it can share your event and if you want more about that talk to Jeff after and that's it folks and then you literally put the uh, the time you put add an image you can put someone's face in it if you want I think Joel that's you me and Sarah that's our faces and that's it folks and then when it comes time to do your show you log in you have a green room, which is a private room where you guys can test mics. You got to be in Google Chrome. Got to be in Google Chrome for it to work. Now, you might say, well, that sounds really complex. Well, it doesn't have to be. If you want to go even simpler than that, you do what we did today with Erica. Erica went here. She pressed a button. She hit. Uh, Start a live video. It's big and red. You see that? You click the button, start a live video, accessing your camera, and I could literally go live right now. That's it. The other cool thing is you can bring a friend on. Susan, I've seen you do that with uh, Sharon. So all she did is she went to her Facebook, hit start a live video. She started the video, and then her friend popped up. She said, bring my friend in, and boom, you're doing it like that. It doesn't allow the comments to show up in that way across the screen, but it's a great start. Does this make sense, everybody? Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me show you how to do that. Yeah. Let me show you how to do that. So I'm leaving this page. I'm going to our videos. So. That, you know, make sure you record it on your page. I'll get there here. Hang on. Internet might be slow, but here we are. And let's just say I want Dexter because he's a good dude. Hey, guys. So you come up here. You see these three dots in the top right? 
Let me try to bring them over. You see the three dots now. Download video. That's it. Download, that's it. Download video, no, not, and not, it doesn't even need to be live, be, be live. As long as you record a video on Facebook, what this is, is this is called a permalink. Do you see that up here? Every video has a permalink, which means it's the place it's going to stay on social media. To get there, you need to click your URL. So I come over here, and then I click this, the three dots, download video. And now I can save it. It saves right to my computer. Okay? You could take it and upload it to YouTube. You could strip the audio with a program like Audacity. A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y, it's free. Is that, is that cool, everybody? Yeah. What? No, it's not cool? All right. You want to ask me after, or do you want to ask now? I don't mind. Okay. Well, you think about it. You think about it. All right. Let's go to a couple other things quick here. I want to highlight some tribe members who are doing it right. The pros and cons of different videos. So here's the thing. It would be very kind of see to be like, hey Dan, let's shoot a show, and I'll I'll. I'll hold my hand up all the way into Tennessee and we'll do a selfie, right? You can't do that. So the reason why you want shows is when you are interviewing someone in a different geography. And that would be Facebook Live, you can do that, or Skype. You can actually do Skype with a recorder then. But I just think it's simple with Facebook. Or you can do Be Live. Those are the three kind of suggestions. Zoom, you can record as well. But unless you have Zoom webinar, you can't share it live. So some of this is, do you want to record it live and broadcast it? Or, sorry, do you want to stream it live or do you want to record it? Yeah, in the past, in the past I kind of recorded some people on Zoom and then posted it later, and that's fine. But then you don't get the questions, the engagement, the comments, that type of thing. FaceTime could work. But you're talking to each other. You're not really then broadcasting it anywhere. And I don't know if FaceTime lets you record. It just, no. So I don't, so not that one. Not that one, OK? Good question. Um, sometimes with the tribe, you guys see me do a live with my phone when I'm just having a carry heart-to-heart -heart chat. I don't do the daily show live. Here's why. I cannot be in flow and be interacting with everyone's comments and questions. And, you know, R Renee said, hey, and asked the question, or Tina said this. Your brain cannot be in flow creating content while you're doing something else. That's called switch tasking. And that actually breaks flow. So that's why if I'm doing a content video, it's content. And you want them less than five minutes. OK? Yeah. No, that's fine. So in this meeting, because we'd like him to come, uh, come in on, but does the more people who are watching your Facebook, I get annoyed with people going, well, how so and so happened? Yeah. The whole, you know, because you do lose the content of the sure. people on there. How do you balance that? Is there a price for yeah. that? Well, with Be Live, you don't have to show every comment. So Be Live, people can ask, people can comment like, you know, haters can be like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. It doesn't pop up. You have to show it. So I choose to reveal comments that I think are going to help the conversation. I think it's annoying for me to be talking to Dan Miller in the, be, in the middle of his point and be like, hey, hey, Joel, hey, this. No, in the beginning, I'll do that to create engagement. Great to see you, Joel, from Dublin. Awesome. Jeff, go ahead, type where you're from. You're, you're, you're acknowledging people. Part of this is they want to be in the experience. It's not just talking heads. Okay? So live stream is a different strategy where you are trying to create engagement. Cool? We're having Renee and, and uh, someone else, Secret, do ISCTV at Igniting Souls Conference. So we have the real show, 
And then we have the behind the scenes, which are only small snippets for the people who couldn't make it. They're not going to get content, but they're going to get some sneak peeks behind the scenes, kind of like the red carpet feel on some of those shows. So, Renee, we're excited about that. We're meeting with John. When? Next week. Something like that. Cool. All right. Tanisha did a 90-day commitment, right? Didn't she? What did she say? 90 days of video. She will tell you that that's the content for her book. Did you catch that? She went out and for 90 straight days gave content. And what happened is at the end she said, oh my gosh, the book I thought I was going to write, I'm not going to write. It's the actual content I just created. So that's a good way to vlog your book. All right? Another person here, shocked. 3,500 views. Dude's like, his first video. It's like, how did that happen? So this is Wendy Gentry's husband, who just recently had a heart attack last week, and, and he's okay. But he's a coach, and he said, you know what? He called, Champions dig deep. I'd be like, Mike, your title, it's not good enough. It worked, okay? So sometimes, <laughs> Chewbacca mom, it worked. Sometimes, you know, the things that shouldn't work, why? Because he's probably super authentic. He's probably talking from his heart, and people are like, yeah. Authenticity trumps everything. Uh, Daphne Smith, Daphne, what does she do? Once a week? Once a week, she says, I want to show once a week. And so she brings on people. She's got 700 views. Disappointment is a part of life. She has how to handle disappointment. People are jumping in. You think people need to know that, that tool? Exactly. Um, let's talk about the last thing, how to leverage video to make sales naturally and effectively. So here's David Samuel, and this was intentional. I wasn't like, oh, at the end, we should have an offer. Totally intentional that we have an offer at the end for people who are stuck and don't know how to narrate their own audiobook. Sometimes people want to hire narrators. Fantastic. It's great. People do a wonderful job. Other times people want to narrate their own. But sometimes people get stuck. So I, I didn't say, hey, jump on this video and David will sell you his course, David Samuel. No, no one's going to jump on. What I said is why audiobooks are the fastest growing platform in publishing and how to cash in. And I gave a ton of value. Remember, what's the point of a video? It's two words. Increase, oh, increase awareness, but give value. But I, most people are like, I didn't know that. I didn't know audiobooks were the fastest growing platform. I didn't know I could get a $50 bounty every time someone buys my uh, book in a Audible subscription. I didn't know that I get 20 free downloads. I didn't know that it was free to get your book up on Audible. I didn't, you know, so the whole point of the video is to raise people's awareness and then at the end say, hey, if you need more help, here's David's course. Does that make sense, everybody? Does that feel salesy? Does that feel salesy? Does that feel like, oh, this guy is snake oil. I mean, this is crazy. No, I gave, I gave probably 20 minutes of straight value, more than that, actually. And then at the end, I said, if you want more, check out this link. And then to David's credit, credit in Business Academy Elite, David has a teaching called How to Create an Irresistible Offer. And we put in there scarcity and urgency. And we put in all those things that are necessary for an effective offer. You don't say, here's David's link. It's good now, and it's good forever, and whenever you want it, it's there. That's not how you sell things. Okay, And you create real scarcity by saying, David's going to do a private round table with all the people who join. And if you don't join now, that goes away. And it really did go away. Uh, notice this was just a point about how all the Igniting Souls conference speakers, the titles were why. And then I moved them into how if they want more. Same thing with Brad. And check it out. I mean, a thousand minutes. That's what's weird about Facebook. Facebook says, 
Women ages 45 to 54 watched your video. Yeah, that was like the, the demographic. And they say, people watched your video for 1,000 minutes. So Facebook starts kind of telling you this stuff just for free. Like, who am I reaching? It's interesting. When I had Rachel, I reached, your video is popular in England. You see, so Facebook kind of like shares these little cool tips with you. All right, there's Jeff Brown, there's Dean Folks, there's Dexter, and let's talk a little bit about the conference now, and then we'll move into some questions. So obviously I'm passionate about this topic. Do you guys think that video has helped the Igniting Souls brand? What do you think? Yes? yes? I agree. And therefore, when David and I have a chat that we say, who should come to the conference as speakers? It's not who's popular, who's going to bring the biggest crowds. We don't really do those things. We say, who is going to bring a skill that our people need that will move the bottom line for them? Does that make sense? I mean, do you guys know a lot of conferences that do that? I don't. But our conference has been growing more and more. Today is early bird deadline day. And David, you know, have our tickets increased in the last 72 hours? Yeah. People move with deadlines. If you try to buy a ticket tomorrow, it will literally be more expensive. Why? Because we got to turn in with Hilton meals. You get four meals with it, OK? We got to have the right room set up. We got to have the right audio visual speakers and displays lanyards. I mean, there's a million details that we don't think about when we plan a conference. We're about 90 days away. I had a, like a panic attack this morning. I was thinking, oh, six months, and then I'm like, 90 days till conference. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a lot to do. But here's the point. The early bird ends today. And so I have a form here. Dow, can you pass that out to anybody who wants one? A lot of you are already coming. So if you're already coming, just, just don't ask for one. Is anybody want one who's not coming. Look at it. You don't need to sign up. I'm not going to like raise your hand or anything like that, but go ahead. Anybody? No. Okay. Erica, if you can put the link in there. Let me talk about this here. Let me talk about the conference. Here's Helen. Can you guys see Helen? Did anybody see her post last night? I'd like to give a last minute shout out for those who may still be teetering on the brink of a decision to come to this year's conference. My first one was last year in 2017. And I booked my place at this year straight after. First of all, I was blown away by the value of this event. I have attended many conferences and events, but I have never attended one so chock full of good stuff, amazing professional and inspiring speakers, practical takeaways, masses of information and lessons learned, not to mention great music, fun activities, good healthy food and fun, friendly people, I made new friends who I can't wait to see again. It was an exciting time, the benefits of which didn't dissipate the minute it was over. And she lives in Dublin. No, she lives in Israel. So everybody in the room who's not coming, you got to ask the question. This woman, I live in Israel, so the cost of this trip is very high for me, but I wouldn't dream of missing it. I didn't even consider it. I booked and knew that I'd have enough to cover it when the time came for the conference and international flights. Not only that, I upgraded to VIP ticket, because if I'm coming over there, I want to soak it in every last drop and value. In short, I would encourage you to treat yourself to probably one of the most important and value-packed events of the year. I don't take transatlantic flights just for anything, but this year's conference, I wouldn't miss it for the world. So guys, I didn't ask her to post that. This is something I just saw last night. You were tagged in it, Erica. I was tagged in it. We are so committed to make this event a success for you that David and I go out on a limb and say, the conference is Friday, October 26th, Saturday, October 27th, Sunday, October 28th. If you come and by 5 p.m. on Saturday, you've sat in the seats, you've eaten the food, if you do not think it's 10 times worth the value, we'll write you a check for a refund. That's how much we believe this event will change your life. We the reason why I'm pushing 
is I believe it's actually not integrous for me to just say, oh, you don't want to come and stay stuck? Go ahead. Have a good life. You know, that's why I'm passionate about this. So we'd love to have you guys come. It's at Hilton Polaris. Early bird is today. It ends today, or if tickets get sold out. And we have uh, just the quick sessions. Let me go through the quick sessions, and then we'll answer any questions about video that you have. So what you're going to walk away with is me teaching you how to close the gaps in your life personally and professionally. Look, how did I go from a stuttering guy, Jeff has a different speech impediment, but I literally didn't speak in, in first grade because I would get made fun of and I just said it's not worth it. So I went from stuttering, self-injuring, depression young man who had suicidal thoughts to now where I am today. It's all because of God, but it's also because I worked really hard to close the gaps. I think sometimes we give God too much credit, meaning that, you know what? We have a responsibility. Otherwise, the parable of the talents would not exist. If it was just, you know, hey, you arrived on planet Earth. It's all God's fault if it goes well. It's all God's fault if it goes bad. That's a fatalist view of life that has no context for the story of the parable of the talents where we're told each one of us have gifts we need to invest it we need to grow it that's on you it's on me I'm going to teach that Dan Miller is going to teach all about how you can actually attract the right people has anybody been in business and they look around and they keep saying why am I attracting the most high maintenance clients in the world David and I don't have that problem I mean and you guys are our clients, so it's a good thing we're saying that, right? But David and I love 99.9% .9 of our clients. We absolutely love. Because they, they show up filled up. They're not complainers. They're not haters. Um, some people are the opposite. Some people's businesses attract people who literally will take down their business. And they continually justify and spend all their precious time trying to make unhappy people who will be eternally unhappy, happy. And that's called a prison sentence, right? So Dan is going to show you a formula for how do you attract high-level, high-profit, low-maintenance clients. Rachel, I mean, Rachel, three years ago, no one heard of. You're, she's going to share her story with you, like her personal story. Single mom, okay? Struggled with substances. Today, woman on fire. Today, on Huffington Post, Cosmopolitan, the Daily Mail, the Today Show, she knows what social media works and what doesn't. Your social media IQ will go up. If you're on social media and you don't come to her session, it's dangerous. I'm just serious. Because the other day, and, and nothing wrong, but the other day, she, she just posted on Facebook, I'm working on my next book, super excited, who's also working on their book. In about 30 minutes, the entire post became massive people self-promoting themselves. And she deleted the post, and she used it as a teaching point that said, you know what, would you ever do that if you were in person at a party? If somebody said, hey, here, who's working on a book? And everybody stands up on top of the tables and says, I am. Here's my book. Would you buy it? Would you do that at a party, at a classy party? But on social media, we don't get it, some of us, and we do it, and that's why we're not getting clients. So her session is not going to be like, oh, you're foolish. Her, se her session is going to be, I made all these mistakes. Here's how to not make them. So again, this session alone is going to pay for the cost of admission. Jeff Brown, look, even if you don't want to be a podcaster, you should be on a podcast. How many people have been on a podcast here? Raise their hand. Anybody. Did it help your exposure and your credibility? When you're on someone else's podcast, it validates what you're doing. It's them promoting you. Do you realize that the only one you can't sell is yourself? Do you realize that? The only person you can't sell is you. You can sell everybody else, but not you. 
When somebody else sells you on their podcast, it adds third-party credibility to you. Jeff's going to say, here's how to scale your current one to six figures. Here's how to start one. Or if you don't want to do that, here's how to be on one. Okay? Brad Burke, some of you have heard him. You've seen our results. Brad literally met with us and said, I, I said, Brad, tell me the truth. And he wouldn't say it. I said, tell me the truth. He said, your YouTube channel stinks. I'm like, thank you. I, I already knew that. Um, but Brad showed us how to do this, how, how to do some of these things. That's why we're bringing Brad to you. Because the day will come when you have a message, you have a product, you have a service, and it's too late to say, you know what? I should probably have a YouTube channel. It's like a tree. When is the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. When's the second best time? Today. When's the best time to start a YouTube channel? 10 years ago. When's the next best time? Today. Brad's going to show you how to do that. Dexter Godfrey, amazing, amazing, amazing. Listen, Jeff said it himself. You didn't think you were a speaker. Suddenly, I think speaking is in your career. I, I honestly think that because your, your message is resonating with people. All right? The point is this. When you prepare for the moment, the moment is prepared for you. If you are not prepared to move your audience to action and suddenly you get a speaking invitation, it's too late. It's like Captain Sully saying, you know what? I should have probably paid attention to bird strike class. You know? No, the bird strike happened, and I say this. The stage will not ruin you. The stage will reveal you. If you are not ready to be on stage, you will be revealed. So why not have insurance, which is, I want to get around one of the top speakers, Dexter Godfrey. Look him up. You'll see he's amazing. David is going to hit it right where we need it, and that is you got to scale your business. If you're trading time for dollars, eventually you're going to reach a cap. You are. And kids, do you have 20? You have 12. Because I heard you say the word 20 the other day, and I thought that stuck with me. Terry knows that with 20 eventually grandkids, she wants to travel. And if she is literally saying, well, I can't make money unless I'm sitting across somebody, she's limited. Okay? Uh, Dean, folks, is going to talk about how we can and should solve the world's problems with the gifts and talents God has given us. Dean's going to talk all about that. He's a man who lives it. I mean, you look at what we're here right now. This is the church he leads, okay? And, and Dean is all over speaking, but he's all over helping impoverished nations. And we want to ignite souls that way as well. So, folks, early bird ticket, you got 16 hours left. There's no hype. David created the page. In 16 hours, it flips over. Price increases if there's tickets left. So I want to encourage you to do it. Any last video questions? Any last questions about video? I do not want you to leave not knowing the answer about video. Any questions about video in our last 90 seconds? Anybody? Yes? Yeah. So you, here's the cool thing about live video on Facebook. All your friends will see Dow has just started a Facebook live video. It actually is an extra uh, advertisement and marketing that Facebook says, we want people on Facebook. Dow must be doing something. Let's tell all of Dow's friends that he's live. And for like five seconds in the bottom right-hand corner, they can click the button and immediately be brought to your show. So the beauty of live video is on Facebook, it's going to tell your friends. They might not be on this type of thing. I encourage you to start it on your fan page, then share it immediately while you're doing it, just like Erica did today, on your multiple things. The group you're going to create, everyone's going to create a group in the future, right, in the next six months? Some of you in the next six days? Anybody in the next six hours <laughs> going to start a Facebook group? Even just to start it? You don't need to put anybody in it, okay? Have you thought about that, Mark? Okay. Photography, there's a lot of wannabe photographers who need Mark's training. And they know that 
Mark knows his stuff. Mark, you've been, you've been doing a lot of photography the last three months. Have you thought about popping up that camera and saying, hey, I'm about ready to shoot a wedding, and here's how I'm going to pack my vehicle so I don't break the lenses? I mean, have you thought about that type of stuff? I'm the idea, but I'm All right. Thinking. But do you see, you see what I'm saying? Guys, we do the most mundane things every day, and we, we just think everybody can do it. But if you did a quick recorded video or a live video, people would dig that. The other day, I typed in Honda air pressure on YouTube because I didn't know what, I don't know anything about cars, you know? Boom, all kinds of videos. All it was was a guy saying, you know, here's how to check the tire, something, something, something. I don't even know. Don't ask me. But he's just doing a normal task, but he's filming it. And he titles it, and people start engaging. What's the second highest search engine in the world? YouTube. We are a video culture. If you are not on video, and I'm not saying change your life and be a vlogger and be a professional YouTuber. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that. If your competitor is on video and you're not, guess who's going to win? Them. People are going to find them, search them, get value from them. And you might say, well, I'll start it someday. Start it now, afraid, like Jeff, and boom. Okay? Last question. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been practicing with pre-doing my own videos. Cool. And then putting them on Facebook, and I've been really open saying, hey, I'm practicing for my podcast. Okay. Get, get some action? Um, well, my friends like them. Yeah. So, Put it on your fan page. Okay, create a fan page. And then share it, and don't say I'm practicing. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? I mean, listen, how many people show up to watch a Buckeye practice versus a Buckeye game? <laughs> so, guys, all I'm saying is I get it. I'm glad you said it. But... This is these little tweaks that you're going to pick up at the conference that will move the needle. The same thing with your event, calling it TBA. It's the kiss of death. And I used to do that. Like, well, I don't have a location yet. I don't have a date yet. Make it up and change it later. Because clarity attracts, confusion repels. And when you say, this is practicing, what do you think? No, you are a professional who's showing up on social media to give value. And until you own that role, people aren't going to take you seriously. People aren't going to pay you money and hire you if you're practicing. Okay, so no, I'm just messing with you. You know, uh, you know you're one of my favorite students, Author Academy Elite. But I, first of all, let's give her a hand for being on video. <laughs> seriously. So A, you're in the game. A lot of people aren't even in the game. And that's how you're going to grow by saying that question, and now you just had a big learn, and you're going to have higher engagement. So the, the follow-up is live stream. If I don't like how it turned out, can I delete uh, it? Awesome. You can always delete it. Okay. Yeah. So I should practice live stream. Pa practice live stream. Even if you want to delete it, you don't have to share it. That's true. Okay. At the end, it says share or delete. Yep. Terry? is eclipsing blogging, yeah? Because here's another thing. If you have unlimited data, you can't read an article while you're driving. You can't read an article while you're mowing the lawn. You can't read an article while you're putting away dishes. I listen to things all the time, all the time, on video, you know, when I'm around the house, um, you know, if the kids are asleep. Um, it's called net time, no extra time. So while you're doing mundane things, put your brain to work. Okay? Awesome. Guys, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. We'll be here back in August. And I really hope to see all of you at the Igniting Souls Conference. Thanks so much.